Dude, yeah. uh, same price. Uh, there is a story told about, <laughs> we have a saying in the Gomorrah that up to the age of 40, a person should eat more and drink less. And after the age of 40, he should drink more and eat less. So uh, a, a guest was invited to a, a feast, and he not only ate a lot, but he drank a lot. So the host said, please, I don't want to hurt your feelings or anything. He says, I don't know. How do you hold this position? The Gemara says that you're supposed to, if you're less than 40, you eat more. And if you're more than 40, you drink more. He says, I just turned 40. <laughs> I'm hesitating because... <laughs> you don't want to admit? <laughs> no, I do admit it. I do admit it. I'm the first one to admit that I've got... I haven't had a vacation in 20 years. I was well, a slave and a workaholic. Well, look, well, brought on by myself. No, no, no. I've right. learned my oh, lesson. Yeah. Real good. No, no, sure. All right, go. This is great. All right, we have my mother take there. All right. It's in trade. It is flying on both sides, right? Yeah. All right, you're going now? Okay, fine. So, we'll 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 learn something perhaps that okay. will be interesting to all of you. Okay. Uh, we'll learn uh, a Gemara and Brochus. Uh, thank you very much. Wait. Pause. It's still going. Okay. All right. right. Okay, oh. we're okay. All right, fine. We'll, we'll learn the Gemara and Brochus. Chopchas, you don't mind, I'll repeat the mission again. I'm all right. happy. It starts. Uh, Rabbi Nechuna. You have it? Big letters. Yeah. You have that? The new Benakona used to go and pray when he entered into the house of learning. He also, and when he went out, left Philo Katsura a short prayer. So they asked him, Ma Mokim at Philo Zu, what what the place has this prayer to do? Why do you say this particular prayer that you're saying? He said to them, Miknis Nasi, when I enter into the house of learning, Miss Paleo, I pray. God, that there should not happen anything that's of a stumbling nature, stumbling block nature, through me. If I'm going to learn God's Torah, I don't want something to be messed up. And when I go out, when I leave, I give God on my portion that I have the privilege and honor of learning His Torah. That's the Mishnah. Baal Omer. When he entered into the base of Midrash, into the house of learning, uh, what did he say? What was the specifics of the prayer? The Lord my God, there should not happen something that could come to a stumbling block through me, through my hand. And I shouldn't stumble. These right, and that my, my friends, now learning what they have, Simcha. Why Simcha? Rejoice. A lot of times people are, are really big. They sort of laugh because they respect it is cruel. When a person has swords, he doesn't have to be in or the other way around. Neither should I say on something that is clean, that I say clean because of my lack A lot of times people go and come to a wrong. And he passes the Shiva, he goes more strictly than he if he can't find a leniency within the framework of the law. The Jewish people that they see within the framework of the law so that it wouldn't be so difficult on the Jewish people to live according to the Torah law. You understand that? To make a Jewish life that is not the way a Jew should live and that's not should treat the Jewish people. They should for the world to remove that when somebody was discussing Torah with him, he would forget his place of Chachomi, one after the other, to the cure of the shame. God will elosin lovo. There'll come a time God says, even if your sins is red, we learn that, that we, we say that every time, and they, because in truth, the Torah is tremendous, this link between and we have a saying that you you, you heard in the Zohar it says there HaKodesh Baruch Hu the Arisa and and the Torah and so therefore when we have this combination there is nothing that can happen that, uh, that could be worse or uh, 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 better than it. I'm going to have it yeah. so he said to them 
is how the cover you should be very careful in the honor of your fellow students. When you learn Torah, you should realize it and short sighted for to assume that the only one that has to learn Torah is the teacher. Everybody at so he says, yeah, and when you learn together, sometimes, and when you're students, you make uh, obvious mistakes. This is inevitable, uh, because re it requires you to discern what mistakes you are in your understanding of what it's supposed to be. And so, when you make these mistakes, your fellow students are not supposed to deride you and make you feel terrible that you made a mistake. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people when they go to a class and they're learning, if one makes a mistake, one asks a question that perhaps is not the whole thing, everybody laughs at him, and, and so uh, thanks God, uh, when we did, we may laugh, but we don't intend to leave the house to hurt anybody's feelings, you understand? really good anyway, so we never really had the occasion to happen. But in case it does happen, it is not a proper thing for, for a person to procure COVID to hurt honor of his fellow. You should go and wean your children away from uh, just, uh, just repeating over and over again what shot this Rashi is giving just over and over again. People are by road talking children's talk. You've got to go and try to make your children more and more knowledgeable in Torah concepts to build up their capacity to learn. Uh, when you have Talmud, you're supposed to build up their capacity to learn. They should make progression in their capacity to learn because it's not proper. Notice, I'm not criticizing for this. There's certainly a tremendous merit that people go and sit cheering of other people and they sit there for years. But after sitting there for 10, 15, 20, 40 years, we still can't make a lady. And that's not a proper thing. Everybody has to make progression because in truth we all have the obligation to serve Almighty God. Or Shivam Bing, and when you have children, you must expose them but you uh, set them between the, the knees of Talmudic, uh, Talmud scholars. In other words, expose them to the right, proper influences. Don't assume that your children automatically will turn out to be fine. You must give them the proper influences. You must put, give them the type of education that will lead them to become decent types and religious types. And this doesn't happen accidentally. It happens in a, a framework in which, is, uh, which if you provide enough of that uh, atmosphere, it sometimes takes. Of course, you have no guarantee that it will always take, but you have to provide the proper atmosphere. Shatem is Pauline. And when you do pray, you come to show, a person comes to show, when you pray, you must know before whom you are standing. You're standing before the King of Kings, the Kodesh Ruchu, the Holy One, blessed be He. And you must act with the proper decorum, with the proper seriousness. You don't pray, you're not talk to God like you talk to a human being. You must, with the proper, with, and if you do all these things, you will merit to have the life of the world to come. You will earn eternal life. This is what he told to his students while he was dying. They, he gave them a, a way in which to go and do it. So now there's another example. Pichol was one of the Tamidim, the, uh, the youngest they learned from, and he was the one that uh, saved the, the, the Shiva and the Yab and the, the ruling Gamliel's uh, family at the time of the Churban Bais by the Roman, he saved them and uh, Rabbi Yochum ben Zah, when he became, he was dying, Nechnesu, um, the Bakro, his students entered in to go and meet Yerchol again, to go and wish him well and 
soon as he saw them, he began to cry. Rabbi Yochan Vazadai, who was the, uh, the leader of the Jewish people, near Israel, you candle of Israel, Amod Yemini, you right hand pillar of Israel. They had two Amudi in the, in the Mikdash, and Shlema Malach set up, and the Amod Yemini was the most, was the, uh, was wrong, it was called Yochi, and the other one called Boaz, and the Yemini was always considered the most Choshev in it. You Patish, that's the, uh, you strong hammer, the hammer, you, you strong hammer, in other words, uh, these are flowery expressions of their great respect for the great Why are you crying? If before a king of flesh and blood they will be bringing me, God, today he is here, and tomorrow he's in the grave. Referring to the king. Uh, to king. Yeah. If he would be angry on me, in Kasolam, is being Ostroni, and even if he imprisons me, to me for all eternity, beam in me, and even if he puts me to death physically, aim me so physically kill me, he cannot kill me for all eternity, my soul will live for eternity. But you hold a pious soul before him, and with a, with a human king, I can pass time with words. By the time your words can get you out, Moses, he had a lotion. Life and death is in the hand of the tongue. If you speak in the proper way, you perhaps can go and save your life a lot of times. Or a shelchat woman, or I could bribe him with money, if that's, uh, that's the way it has to be. Alpha PK, even given all these, or Yisi Bocha, I would be crying before I had to come before a judgment, before a human children now that they're praying me before the King of Kings, our Kodesh Baruch, the Holy One, blessed be He, that He lived for eternity, for all eternity, that, uh, without uh, falling Amen. forever. Cross all I am, God forbid, He is angry on me. Cross, oh cross, all of God forbid, His anger can uh, last for all eternity. He surely he sure all of me, because God forbid, imprison me for all eternity. Even be sunny, and if he kills me, God forbid, well, he can kill me for all eternity. Not only the, 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 the goof, but even the shovel. Any yochel of ice with words, and I, I have no way of pacifying him with words at that point. Neither can I bribe him with money. Does God need money? Well, not only that, there is before me two possibilities, two ways in which I can go to heaven. God forbid the other one to help. Any idea, I'll see. And I don't know which way they're going to lead me, the uh, angels or the, this great uncertainty. Here we're talking about this great study, this great, this great, you know, Thomas Hoffman, who was one of the greatest Jews that ever lived. And at his time of his dying, he felt Somehow, for you, that he might not be, have earned a portion of the world to come. Amr lo Rabbeinu, he said to them, our teacher, or Keno, bless us. He said to them, he wrote so, may it be the will of the Son of God. He said, hey, more of us with them. May it be the will that the fear of heaven should be upon you, just like you fear a, a flesh and blood. Just like you would not do something improper in the presence of a king or press upon the authority, so also you should not do anything improper in the presence of Almighty God. God? Just this much? Shouldn't we fear God more than we fear a human being? Well, why? How why that you should do it that degree? That's all you have to do, because in fact, you are always presence of Almighty God. They do. You should know, you should all them over a vero. When a man does a transgression, over shalom, you're only all them. 
he usually, if he's a decent type up to this point, he, he said, if I have to do a, a, this thing, I don't want a, a human. So in the same uh, thing, we should be ashamed if, God forbid, we, we live in such a way that we are ashamed of what we're going to do. Or what we should be ashamed to do in Avera. Uh, hit get that high God. Shas Peter also, at the time when he was dying, him, he said to them, remove all the vessels, all open vessels from Tommy, the inside the containers, anything that's open becomes Tommy Mace. And prepare uh, King. Who was the king at that time? Kyo was a great savage. He lived well, in the mm -hmm. He's coming. He says okay. like this, he's giving them a hint that he's going to heaven. Oh, who had already lived? Yeah. He's now... This Kyoa is dead. Apparently um, let me see. This Kyoa lived in the year 701. We see Yerushalayim. There were two great tzaddikim in Yerushalayim. His and Yeshaya Novi. Yeshaya Novi, because of their merit, his prayed to God. They prayed to God. And God caused the whole army of the Assyrians to be wiped out overnight. Right? Would be appointed to escort this. Maybe he was related to his and not your. And so was Yeshaya, as a matter But not what? the person we're talking about, uh, Yochan. It was much later. I mean, related no. from the no. no. Zakai guy was from what was. Well, wait, where was the comrade of Hilo and Shammai, he lived uh, during the Churban Abayas. The Churban Abayas occurred in the year 70 of Common Era. That would be almost uh, 750 was, years later. I'm trying to deduce the idea that I've heard that uh, many times uh, the, the person who was dying in their last moments uh, before their death, they, they see their father, their mother, they see the, their family that passed on. Yeah. And these people come to escort them into the other world. So, so I assume that this is what he's saying, that to the Tamim prepare a chair for Hizkiyo, who's coming, who's coming, uh, he's, meaning he saw him. Let's learn uh, another Gomorrah See now. We can learn a Gomorrah here on, turn back on to uh, 39. Way in the bottom, the last line. Okay. I always like to start with yeah, a Mishnah, fine, because sure. then you can work yourself into the sure. Indian. Okay? Yeah. You have it? Yeah. Noshim, women, yeah. and, and slaves, okay. Katani, and, and little children, they are put their, the obligation to say Kriya Shema at the proper time, because why? It's a mitzvah say it's a proper Shazman Gromo, that has to be done at a certain time. You, you have, we have the, the Haloch, that you have to say the Kriya Shema, fill the mitzvah twice during the day, a minimum of twice, during the morning and once uh, during the night. So, any mitzvahs are saved, Shazman Grom, Noshim Apaturi. Women, Jewish women, are part of them. They have other obligations. Why, why? We haven't finished it yet. Well, we'll go further. We'll, 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 let's finish the rest of the mission. Shema uh, is one thing. Tefila is the Shmon Esri, where you ask them, that's a different thing. Yeah, but We're talking about different things. And also, we have a, a general rule that the people that were born non-Jews became slaves. They have all the women, all the obligations of a Jewish woman. So just like a Jewish woman is potter, he's obligated all the mitzvahs. There's no way in which he is obligated, just like every other Jew. He has to daven. Master Rewai daven. Yeah. So, and he's even, even if it's old enough to learn, he doesn't, we don't put on this particular responsibility because he can't be found usually or all the time, at the times that you have to say the Kriya Shema at the proper time. So is a cotton considered prior to Bar Mitzvah? Or earlier? Or prior to Bar Mitzvah. All right. And yeah. he's not reliable enough, or he hasn't got to that point. Oh, no. He's learning. That's in training. All right, let's look at that. Turn over. Yeah. Uh, turn over the next uh, And he doesn't have to put on, because first of all, in Tvilin, uh, it's uh, to be done in the daytime, usually, and not at night, and not in Yom Tov or Shabbos. 
and so women, uh, since it has to be done at a certain time, women are potter, avodim are potter, and presumably the, he yeah. doesn't know how to go and keep himself clean, so what, okay. uh, so to chayovim, uh, but they are obligated to tefillah, with prayer, that means we're talking about the Shmona Esrei, why? Very simple, Rashi said, and tefillah is seeking rachmonas, it's a meter up on it, and uh, we say that women should also uh, seek Rachmanus of God. Everybody needs God's Rachmanus. Yeah. And uh, also to train the young ones to go on uh, to seek Rachmanus. We also train them also to say Shmona Esri. Kuvah Mezuzah? Mezuzah. And they're obligated also to have a Mezuzah. It doesn't have to be done just in the daytime, also at night. So every mitzvah has saved. She has law as man that means that she can make the bracha of putting it up if she is a widow that's right and doesn't have a husband that's right. and she moves then she has to put up the mezuzah and she's allowed to say the bracha that's i right. presume that's right i recall according to my wife and this incident my future mother-in-law lost her many years before it happened that the mezuzah fell on the wrong side of the door so i i said to them please forgive me i don't want to hurt your feelings but who should be at this side of the door so, um, episode, and we were, I was courting my wife, and you know, partially tight, but I come get strong. My wife knew that I was looking for him. I just met her by the third date. This man, he's a very religious type. I explained to her, what the time David Regensburg, uh, what should I look for in a wife? I, I told you this before. Oh, you did? Well, I'll oh, repeat it. I'll repeat it. I, he, he said, so I, was, I was in the higher in the yeshiva, and I said, he said, what do you look like? And so I wanted a wife to be your shaman. I says, Rebbe, is your Shemaim such a small thing? He says, you can trough in a Gemara. He just quoted the Gemara. Because the Gemara in Rocha says that out to your Shemaim, look the Zutra, see, he, is your Shemaim such a small thing? Exactly the quotation I said. Now I know where it's at. Of course, the Lama Gimel, the Rochas. But the, the thing is that uh, at that time I had learned it, but remember right. for the rest of my life. So uh, I says, uh, so he says, he suddenly came down to, to the facts. He says, there are three areas in which you should be done. She should be a Shomer Shabbos, and you know, she should be a Shomer Kashers, and the Shomer Taras HaMishpoch. And you know, after, he says, any other thing, do not be Nadadi. Don't expect to find a wife that can learn a blood Kabbalah like you. Barbara says, but she doesn't go and learn this. I followed his advice exactly to the point. So when I met my wife, and she was the first woman that I dated more than twice. Never when I met the types of people, and you can't have any, you can't even no, self. No. In the first place, by the time I started looking for a wife, yeah. there was no chmira already. I had gone to Yeshiva, I was already 37 years old when I started looking. I had gone to Yeshiva, so by the time I was looking, they were already either taken, sure. or they were either confirmed, a uh, bachelor, uh, a bachelor woman or whatever it was, and then they were all for business sure. types. Who needs it? So, all right. So, I liked the way my wife looked, and I liked the way she uh, conducted herself. She had Baruch Hashem, a tremendous meter, which she, uh, she was treating, uh, supporting her widowed mother with dignity. And that I knew right away. This woman was an extraordinary type. So, she knew these things, and, well, so she, uh, she, uh, wrote me a letter at the end of the third day to me uh, and she says that we're not compatible I got the letter she was going to write and she wrote to a man that in New York didn't have a wife of his own he was going to look for me for a wife he right. couldn't find one for himself oh, he couldn't go find me one yeah. alright at any rate so I pointed out this thing so the British this disturbed them uh, my, my future mother-in-law said since your father died you have nobody to watch these things He's around, you know where to go. So after uh, two or three weeks, uh, she called me up. She asked me, where can I go and get a mezuzah? I said, I'll be glad to take you there. And that's the way it got to... Uh, so, um, Baruch Hashem, so a mezuzah is something that a, a Jewish woman uh, is obligated to do, thanks yeah. God. Okay. And because of mezuzah, we, we got together again. You see, Mitzvah Guerrero is Mitzvah. Right. A Jewish woman is also obligated to thank God for the food she eats. Right. The Muslim because it's a right. mitzvah to say, the, the husband is the follow boss and he provides the food which he promised and 
in the kasuva that he's going to take for, take care of her as in the proper way, why should she have to say Birka Samozan? Birka should be on the husband only. Okay, but the, well, the Gemara later will ask the question whether in fact it is a Torah law or just the law of the rabbis. But whatever it is, she is obligated to do it for whatever reason you All will right. say. I see it's there, yeah, but yeah. I'm thinking she shouldn't As long it. as she's saying Tvila, she's allowed to ask for a rach. And the mitzvah, is, uh, I can understand the uh, protection. She has to feel under that obligation under that uh, yoke, but Birka Samosa, it, it's really her husband is supposed to be the provider for her. Uh, what type of provider? We're saying well, grace yeah. after meal. Yeah. That's Birka Samosa. Uh -huh. Thanking God for the food that you've eaten. As a matter of fact, we have in another place All in right. Brokos, that you're not supposed to have any law in this world, any benefit in this world, okay. because this world is holy, unless you thank God. Right. You understand? So what's terrible about a person being uh, grateful to God and thanking Him? Is there anything terrible about it? Good. If she had to go out and work for the food, then she, I would say, okay, she could say Birka Samosa because she provided it. She, you have to, and didn't have to work for the food. Shouldn't he go and then did you have again? He, ha he has the obligation. Always judging. Why is it that the person should be? I uh, wonder I'm from not the, the idea that I feel that in the Kasuba. No, uh, this is a Mishnah. This is a Mishnah in, 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 the, in Kedushi. On Chav Tes, it says like this: Kol mitzvahs losar sev, all the parts, all the commandments of a next of nature, men and women are obligated to do, and all the mitzvahs of a positive nature that don't have to be done at a certain time, both men and win, women have to do also. Because the Muslim will be a positive nature and have to be done at a certain time. Not that about. You can eat throughout any 24 hour of the yeah, period. She's backing up my argument that. Here, She's got to interrupt after her meal and take the, the few minutes to say that. Oh. Yes. Uh, I see. If I put it there again, uh, it's not a question of, uh, it wouldn't be an Easter, it wouldn't be a prohibition. No, I'm not. A that you can't put on her extra burden. That, uh, extra burden. That's what I think. It's taking time away from her ability to, to, to take well, care of the children. Let's, let's go tomorrow. Let's see what let's, this guy said. Okay. Certainly, if it's Kriya Shema, certainly. It's a positive commandment, has to be done at a certain time. And we have a general rule in the, uh, the Gemara. Any commandment that is of positive nature in the Torah, that has to be done at a certain time, Noshim Peturos, women are potter from it. So why should you go and even mention that they are potter from Kriya Shema? We would know it. It still fits in with the general rule. So the more answer is the reason I have to mention it, not the same I would think to say. Oh yeah, we east bomb, I would think to say, when you say Krishna, the first section of Krishna is accepting upon yourself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. Now isn't it true that every single human being has to accept upon himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven? I would think so. I, I don't think that women are are less less obligated to serve Almighty God than men. They both are obligated to serve Almighty God. Yeah. So come to let us hear. Kamash Malot, come to let us hear. Although they are in fact obligated to serve God and accept upon God, they don't have to go, they're not forced to stay at a particular time. We're not going to put that additional burden on them because a Jewish woman always already has tremendous responsibilities in relation to uh, taking care of children and, and, and the know, is, the Torah is very okay. fair. It doesn't put a burden on, on children, on a woman, more than she can uh, why, take. Why would you have the requirement for a We say he has all the mitzvahs of, of, of a woman, a Jewish woman. He has to keep Shabbos, just yeah. like work. You can't work your, your, your Evan Kamani uh, on Shabbos. No, you can't work them, but it wouldn't be to work voluntarily on it. No, no, no. You're not supposed to go on uh, Tarp's Road. You're not supposed to go on the Eden. You the teacher of it. You got to, because when he becomes a free person, he becomes uh, uh, like a Jerus. He becomes a, a Jew. He becomes obligated to all the mitzvahs. Not of, all the mitzvahs of women. No. When he becomes a free, because he is a man. But he doesn't have the mitzvahs of women when he... Uh, he has the mitzvahs of a woman. And as an ethic man, he would have to, if there was nobody else in the house, to take care of it. You must understand something. Uh, that, I, the art, well, nowadays we don't have that. Mm -hmm. obvious. But, uh, but in the time that it was knowing, they were doing all these things. No, he's between the middle state. He's, he's no longer considered a goy, per se. 
and neither is it considered a full-fledged Jew either. But yet when he, the master let him go, then he becomes a Jew. No, he becomes a Jew. When he frees him, gives him a he becomes a free. He becomes a Jew. He's considered a Jew. He can never Obligated. He can never become a Jew. He's willing to become a Jew. And this thing, this is Shiloh there, whether or not a uh, thing. But uh, uh, ordinarily, for instance, we assume uh, is making a decision in this direction. Because ordinarily, if a person really is not uh, addicted to immoral type of conduct and earn a portion of the world to come, you understand? He gets schar for mitzvahs. It's a tremendous responsibility and privilege to be a Jew. You serve God and you're commanded to serve God.